Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie. If you're new here, I am a morning TV news anchor in WAND in Central Illinois. This is Indicator and um, I live in Champaign. So welcome to my channel. So I thought today would be a good idea to do a video all about the morning TV shift, what it's like and some tips and tricks that have really helped me and I've helped some of my coworkers to kind of get used to the morning shift. Because as you may know, or maybe you don't, it's a brutal shift. I mean, waking up at two o'clock in the morning, 2.33, 3, it's just not natural. It's not natural to our human bodies. We weren't meant to do that. We're meant to wake up with the sun and go to sleep with the sun when the sun goes down. So it's definitely hard, but it's definitely doable. And I think with these small tips and tricks, it can make it easier for you to get used to those the, those hours and that schedule and so hopefully this can help you out the number one thing that i want to emphasize is that this is all about routine and all about doing something over and over again eventually bodies get used to things like that and i truly never thought i'd say that my body got used to waking up at 2 a.m and going to sleep at 6 p.m it's bizarre for me to think that that has happened so i'm sure it can happen to you too if you are currently about to join that shift or maybe you've been on it and you just want some extra tips on how to be a little bit healthier and happier and kind of master this schedule. So starting with making sure you're as healthy and as hydrated as possible. I mean, obviously our bodies are gonna feel very out of whack when we're doing this schedule. And one of the things you can do is just help your body out in other aspects of life to make sure that you are always healthy. So obviously try to drink as much water as possible. I read uh, somewhere online, some health article, that if you are well hydrated, you're less likely to be tired. So before I go to sleep and right when I wake up, I drink about eight ounces, which is about a cup of water. And that has truly, truly helped me kind of alertness before drinking that morning cup of joe, that morning cup of coffee, which we will discuss later on in this video. So making sure throughout the day you are drinking water, you're always hydrated, might be TMI, but if you look at the color of your pee and it's that light yellow, then that's what it's supposed to be looking like. And that's how you know you're hydrated. That's how I monitor my hydration levels. And I'm sure you've heard if you're thirsty, that means you're dehydrated. So make sure that we'll, so making sure that you're hydrated is always something perfect that you can do to make sure that your body feels as good as possible. And obviously what you feed into your body, I mean, you are what you eat. We've heard that saying several times. So try to eat whole foods and a balanced whole meals throughout the day. When I wake up at two in the morning, I do end up eating my breakfast at that time. It's always something well-rounded, whether it be nuts and a fruit, or this morning I had a whole rice chicken and sauce, like tikka masala sauce. So sometimes it's crazier than other days, but I do try to get a meal in before the show. The show's usually at five. I usually get my meal in around three or four in the morning, and that kind of helps get you started on that train for the rest of the day. You incorporate whole foods, fruits and vegetables, um, things that have a lot of carbohydrates because carbohydrates are energy for you. Don't limit food groups and just making sure that you feel yourself and that's gonna help a lot with your energy levels and just how you feel day in and day out. We yeah, I mentioned this earlier, but we are meant as human beings to go to sleep when the sun goes down and wake up when the sun comes up. I mean, cavemen did that, you know? The very first people on this earth did that. Animals do that for the most part, but obviously with the morning shift, waking up at 2.23, which is the time that I set my alarm at, it's kind of impossible to for the sun to come up at that time. So how you kind of have to help your body reach that circadian rhythm, which if you don't know what circadian rhythm is, it's pretty much, this is the definition. I'll just put it on the screen right here, but it's making sure that your body goes in tune with the sun. And in, so what I do to kind of mimic the sun going down is a couple of hours before I have to go to sleep. So usually my bedtime is around 6 p.m. Those blackout curtains come on in my room and I go to the room, and I just start decompressing for at least I'd say 30 to an hour before you actually want to be sleeping and just kind of pretend like it is getting dark outside and trick your body into thinking that it's darkening and that's going to help a lot with just getting you in the mindset to go to sleep and help you go to sleep a lot faster so it's super super beneficial amazon has the best blackout curtains i have these that you're seeing on the screen right here and it has been truly life-changing in times where i need a little bit extra more darkness i just use the eye covers i have a really pretty pretty silk one that i got at target and it really helps as well 
before the, when I started the shift, I didn't use blackout curtains for maybe the first couple of weeks while I waited for them to, while I waited to find the right ones because I was very picky about the color and you know, all that good stuff. So I made sure that once I got those blackout curtains, my sleep got astronomically better. I fall asleep super fast and I think the fact that I kind of make my body think that it's nighttime has helped a lot with that. Next tip, and this is something that I did in the beginning and I don't do as much anymore, I do it every now and then, is tracking my sleep with an app. So I got the Sleep Cycle app and it's super easy. Basically, you tell it when you're going to sleep and then it kind of li listens to you the entire night with its microphone, like on your phone. When you wake up, you say that you're done sleeping and it gives you a total report of what your sleep looked like. So this is, for example, one of my sleeps right there that you're seeing on the screen. And to me, it was really helpful in the beginning to kind of know how much sleep I was getting to make sure I was getting enough or to make sure that I needed to get a little bit more or whatever the case may be. So I use that very, very often and whenever I know that I'm kind of feeling like I'm not sleeping enough and maybe feeling a little bit more lethargic throughout the days or just not feeling myself, I start tracking my sleep again just to kind of get back on in the rhythm of knowing, hey, I have to be going to sleep at this time and I get to see on a screen, I'm a very visual person, that I am getting enough sleep and maybe I have to look at other things that might be impacting whether or not I'm tired. And now talking about napping. This was a huge thing that I thought of and I tried to research as best as I could when I started the schedule because I have known of other morning reporters and other morning anchors who did nap or who nap like from two to four hours right after their shift. And I wasn't sure I wanted to do that because I wanted to do stuff in my day. So I was trying to research the benefits of napping or not. And after doing much reading and after experimenting with myself and my own body doing this for a year, I have realized there is no perfect schedule to napping. What I do is I listen to my body. If I finish the morning show and I am exhausted, where I'm literally falling asleep and my shift is still not even close to being over, at that point, I will go to my makeup room. I did a whole vlog where I included my nap routine or I'll go to my car if it's not too hot outside and I would just take a 30 to 45, maybe sometimes an hour nap. But if I'm not tired, I'm not gonna force myself to nap. So I, it's truly listening to your body and seeing when you're tired and when you might need that extra push. They say to limit, all the articles that I've read say to limit your nap to less than an hour and 30 minutes. So less than 90 minutes. And actually the most effective naps are the ones 20 to 40 minutes because then you wake up not feeling like you're wondering what year you're in. You know when you take that nap and you wake up and you're like, what is going on? You feel so weird. That means that you woke up in the middle of a sleep cycle and you didn't complete the sleep cycle and that's why you might feel weird and might even feel more tired after the nap. And that happens when you take an when your naps are longer than an hour 30 or around that mark. So I tried to never pass an hour just to not get into that territory. And I've realized if I put my timer for about 50 minutes, that allows me for, you know, five, 10 minutes to fall asleep and then I wake up, I feel so much more rejuvenated after that nap. Maybe I'll have a cup of coffee, which again, we'll talk about right now. And that will help me a lot continue the rest of my work day or continue the rest of my day. Sometimes I'll get home and take that 30 to 40 minute nap. But honestly, more often than not, I don't because I really want to be tired by 6 p.m. And sometimes taking a nap can kind of reset your body and it might make you a little bit more, or it might make you less tired later on in the day when you have to go to sleep. And I like to go to sleep tired. And I like for my head to hit the pillow at six and to be knocked out by 6.30. And talking about coffee and drinking coffee, I know a lot of us can't go without it and I, for one, I'm one of those people. So I kind of vary between coffee and Celsius. So if you've heard of Celsius, it's one of those energy drinks that apparently is healthier for you, who knows? And I kind of just alternate which ones I use. I think coffee is a great tool to make sure that you're awake and you're alert and you kind of feel a little bit happier and better. I mean, who doesn't love coffee? But I don't think it's a tool that you should overuse. So yes, drink your coffee, drink your caffeine first thing in the morning, maybe halfway through your shift, maybe as soon as you finish your shift, so that way you can make it a little bit towards the rest of the day and kind of be a little bit more alert. The problem with caffeine and just coffee in general is that it's really easy to overdo it and to drink five plus cups of coffee a day and too much of a good thing is not a good thing. You know, you don't want your body to become dependent on it. And there are some times where I realize 
I think my body is a little bit too dependent on this and then I'll take a break for like a week, two weeks just to kind of reset my body. So definitely use it to your advantage and use it to be more alert, but don't rely on it. Rely on having good quality sleep because that is ultimately much, much healthier for you in the long term. In the morning, Celsius is so much easier for me to grab than making a cup of coffee. So what I do is the day before, I will set up my to-go coffee cup and I already have the creamer or the almond milk or whatever it is that I'm using. So that way in the morning, all I have to do is press the Keurig button and I am good to go and just make your mornings a lot more easier. Talking about waking up in the mornings, I make sure that I sleep till the very last possible second I can. For example, I have to be at my station by 3.30 in the morning. I live about an hour away, so I need to leave my house by 2.30. I wake up at 2.23, because it takes me exactly seven minutes to wake up, press the coffee button, get dressed, or sometimes I even come in my pajamas and I get ready here and get in my car. Some people like to wake up maybe 30 to 40 minutes before they have to like leave, but I don't like doing that. I need time to, I, I don't need time to wake up. I need time to get to the car and that's it. So if you're someone like me who can get up right away and doesn't need to snooze, take advantage of that and sleep to the last possible moment. If my station was in the city I lived in, I'd probably wake up like at 3.20 because it'll take me 10 minutes to get to the station type of thing. But because I do have to commute, which definitely is a sucky part of the job, I just rely on sleeping as much as I can and taking as little time as possible to get to the car and get to your station or your destination if you're watching this for some other job that isn't TV news. So those are pretty much all the tips I have for you guys today. And I mean, feel free to ask me any questions or comment below if there's anything else I didn't really cover or maybe you think that would be a good thing to ask. I'm definitely not an expert in the morning show by any means in the morning routine, but I think I've got it down packed and I really try to make the most of it in terms of what I do after work, you know, going to the grocery store, taking my dog to the dog park and things that maybe would be a little bit harder to do on a regular schedule because of how busy they would be at the regular times that people get off work. So it's definitely been, um, there's pros, there's cons to the morning schedule, but if you make it work for you and if you find the positive, then it can be something really good and really positive for you and for your schedule. And again, if you don't like it, I'm sure there are ways you can change it after you've tried it for a couple of months. And like I said, all it takes is routine and doing this over and over and over again. And then eventually your body's gonna be like, I understand what you're trying to do and I'm gonna help you. Because at the end of the day, your body wants to be as healthy as it possibly can be and wants to help you succeed and be a productive human being. So you just have to help it in return. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys watching any and all of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.